We'll first consider the common emitter configuration. Underlying this analysis is the assumption that the transistor has been biased into the active region and that the small, sigla, small signal approximation with a corresponding small signal model and the small signal model parameters R sub pi, R sub e, G sub m, and R0 are all applicable. These parameters are, of course, determined from the DC bias voltages and currents of the circuit. We'll proceed by replacing the transistor with its small signal model and then connecting the rest of the circuit to that model. In this case, the hybrid pi model has been used. The signal and its source are connected to the base. And the output voltage is taken from the collector. The emitter, of course, is the common node. From observation, R in, which is the ratio of V in divided by I in, so R in is simply equal to R pi, the effective resistance or the small signal model resistance from the base to the emitter. V in is the result of the voltage division of the signal with the signal input re or the uh, equivalent resistance of the signal and R sub pi. So V in then is equal to V sig times R pi divided by R pi plus R sig. R out can be determined by deactivating the signal, turning it to zero, which then makes V in, or as it's referred to here, V pi equals zero. So deactivating the signal then has the effect of making this dependent source, dependent current source, zero, which then represents an open circuit as far as the resistance seen looking in from the output. And we see then that R out is equal to the parallel combination of little r zero and the collector resistance R sub C. And we can calculate the open circuit voltage gain, A sub V0, which is equal to V out over V in with no load resistance connected. So we see here then that V out, let's do it up here, V out is equal to negative G sub M times V pi, but V pi is just V in, V in times the parallel combination of R0 with R sub C. So AV0 then, AV0 is equal to negative G sub M times R0 in parallel with R sub C. Let's make just a few generalized observations regarding the common emitter model, or the common emitter configuration. First of all, the input resistance Rn is only equal to R sub pi. Now we know that R pi is equal to the thermal voltage divided by I sub B, which as we've seen in some of our previous examples, R pi is relatively small on the order of kilo ohms. And compare that to the input resistance with field effect transistors where the input to the gate was infinite. One of the drawbacks to the BJT common emitter amplifier configuration as it's shown here is that the input is somewhat small. And of course, a small input resistance um, when you consider that the input voltage V in is the subdivided portion of V sig, the signal to be amplified, you got the voltage divider there. And a small R pi means that a smaller percentage of the input signal will actually be amplified. The second observation is that R out, which is the parallel combination of R zero and R C, is to a large extent dependent upon R C, the collector resistance. Generally speaking, R zero is relatively large and R sub C will dominate the output resistance. Now, as we know, the output resistance is that Thevenin resistance that's seen by the input stage of the next, of the next stage. And generally speaking, we'd like R0, the output, or not R0, the R, big R0, the output resistance, to be relatively small, which would mean making R sub C small. But as we've seen, the gain of the amplifier is proportional to R sub C, so there's a, a balancing act, there's a trade-off involved. To get a larger R out, output resistance, I'm sorry, to get a smaller 
output resistance requires a smaller R sub C, but that opposes our desire perhaps for a larger gain, which requires a larger R sub C. And finally, the open circuit gain for the common emitter amplifiers is actually pretty large. Um, as we've already pointed out, that open circuit gain is proportional to R sub C, which is typically on the order of kiloohms. G sub M for field effect transistors is relatively large also compared to that of field effect transistors. So in general, the common emitter applications struggles with a relatively small input resistance, a relatively large output resistance, but it does have a strong um, voltage gain. These weaknesses can be compensated for in overall amplifier circuits or amplifier systems by cascading other stages on in front to increase the input resistance and at the output to give some additional current gain or effectively to increase the to uh, decrease the output resistance to compensate for these weaknesses. Now finally, as we saw with field effect transistors, the open circuit gain is only one of three different gain terms that uh, we are interested in. There's the loaded gain, A sub V, which is, we remember, was defined as V out over V in with a load resistance in play. So bringing R sub L in parallel with that, we see then that the R sub L would be in parallel with these other two resistances, and we get then that A sub V is again equal to negative G sub M times the parallel combination of R0 in parallel with R sub C in parallel with the load resistance. And finally, the overall gain, G sub V, is defined as V out over V sig with R sub L in play. That then takes into account this voltage division where V in, as we've already said right here, V in is a subdivided portion of V signal, so this um, voltage division factor then multiplies A sub V to give us the overall voltage gain, or we have then negative G sub M times R pi over R pi plus R sig times R zero in parallel with R sub C in parallel with R sub L.